put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Electra Mood Review. We open on a guy. He, he exists and he's male and he apparently feels really bad about something he did, but that's about what we know about him. He is talking to his chief of security and he yammers on and on about how he doesn't even know why he hired the security because they're, you know, no matter what, he's gonna be dead because Electra's after him. You know what? My theory, I think he just really wanted to pull other people down with him. You know, I'm gonna die, I'm not dying alone. It's like the, you know, yeah. It's that kind of act of desperation. Anyway, he exposits some backstory and basically the scene exists to try to build up how badass Elektra is. Considering that film is a visual medium, I think it might have worked better if we saw how much of a badass she is instead of just being told she killed people real good. And with this, we have re-established the film version of Elektra as an assassin. Yes, no longer is she, uh, I don't know, socialite, I think, basically, as she was in Daredevil. Even though this supposedly is in the same continuity as Daredevil, because we see her be, like, you know, it, it references things that occurred in Daredevil. Well, I guess it's a retcon. Comic books are known for that anyway. Okay, so she is an assassin and she is getting kind of tired of it because that's the story that Hollywood knows to tell about assassins. You know, they are, they are getting tired with what they're doing. You know, it's... Outside of like stuff like, you know, crap, I don't remember what that movie called, is called, the, anyway, usually when Hollywood has a lead who is a hired killer, they will have like second thoughts and is it really right for me to, you know, spend my life killing and such, and they just go through the motions of that here. You know, she becomes a bit attached to two people on, you know, this, this island as she waits for her, for the names of her new assignment and, you know, surprise, surprise, those are her targets. This happens, I think it was half an hour into the movie, and you might be tempted to call that a spoiler, but without that there's literally no plot. That is where the plot begins. Yes, you heard me right, for the first half hour, nothing happens. Oh, it's supposedly character development, but let me tell you, these characters are bland as just, you know, like you wouldn't believe. It, it, Anyway, so throughout, throughout the rest of it, she, of course, feels compelled to protect these people. In spite of how bland they are. Maybe she's trying to protect them from actually, you know, developing a personality. Actually, that 
makes a lot of sense because it's not like this characterization of Electra has a lot of personality. There are going to be people who complain about this movie and say, oh, it's too much for Garner to handle. I disagree. Watch Alias. She can handle a tough female, you know, secretive killer with emotional baggage and, you know, having to, you know, hide her emotions and having to keep up appearances. She can do that real well. It's, it's the writing and it's just the, the whole approach here. Anyway, the two people she is protecting. Mark Miller, and yes, I appreciate the nod at the, you know, comic book, yes, who, actually the most interesting thing about him is his accent. When he refers to his daughter, Abby, for the first time, I could have sworn he said, my dog, Abby, which, which makes it a lot funnier. She does have a little bit of a chihuahua thing going, actually. He just, yeah, there's, there's nothing to him. I have, I don't even know what to say about him. He, he exists. He, he is also male. I, I don't think he feels bad about something that he did, so at least we have that to d differentiate him from the, the, the first guy. He's basically just the obvious, you know, romantic male lead. A lot of people can't stand Daredevil, and I'm not trying to use the, you know, the, the obviously you know, false argument of, well, here's something even worse and that makes it better. No, but what Daredevil did at least have was complex characters for the male and female lead. This, it almost has it for the female lead, but the male lead is just nothing. He just, he barely even does exist, actually, in the film. It's, it's that kind of, you know, it's not even a, like a romantic film, so, I, you know, if it was at least like a romantic comedy, a, a chick flick, you could say, ah, obviously, it's, you know, it wouldn't be any better, but there'd be a reason for it. It's, you know, the, the male lead is so boring so that it won't turn any, you know, girls off to him, you know, so that, but, yeah. And his daughter, Abby. You know, teenagers in movies are often really annoying, but few quite reach the obnoxiousness levels of Abby Miller. It doesn't help that the kid is a pretty terrible actress, but just there's no charm to this girl. Sure, she has personality, but or the, yeah, she she has like these these little hints of personality. It's it's what in Hollywood especially the teenage writing, passes for personality. She's rebellious and, you know... Well, she's rebellious, at least. So, so yeah, there's, there's that. And that, that's something that really harms the movie. We have, you know, basically two of our three main characters are really not someone we care for or about. And Electra herself, yeah, there just isn't that much to it. I felt far more for her and her problems in Daredevil, even though she had a substantially smaller role. When you hear that this is a movie about ninjas, undoubtedly you're saying that, you know, or at least a Hollywood movie about ninjas, you figure that there will be martial arts. And indeed there are. Five minutes or so of it, give or take. The rest of the time, we get magic. And floating articles of clothing. Yeah, that, that about covers it because that's that's you know part of the ninja motif. It it actually gets really silly how often they insist on having floating pieces of, of, of clothing in this movie just just to have it be have it be more ninja y. And by the way ninjas in this movie maybe it's everyone actually when they die they explode into yellow smoke. I think that was just 
you know, the, the dumbest thing they could come up with. Like, they had no good ideas, and so they feel, well, if we can't make it good, let's at least be, you know, really stupid with it. Just, just to, yeah. It looks really goofy. The ninjas in the movie have all kinds of ninja -y powers. There's there's a Vulcan mind meld in there. They teleport all over the place and do these sudden bursts of speed. You know, anything to prevent from actually breaking into a fight sequence because who wants that in a movie with an organization of ninjas where the lead, you know, our hero is, is an assassin who, who has, you know, martial arts weapons and training. You know, that, that'd just be silly. And if the movie didn't take itself so seriously, all this ninja stuff might be fun, but it's such a humorless venture. The only supposed humor comes in, again, the character of Abby, who is intolerable and never funny. So, yeah, it's just this drab. Yeah, if, you know, if, if you're gonna do ninjas seriously, you have to actually have cool ninja-ish stuff. It, it doesn't work just by throwing magic at us. And in fact, the magic tends to be... Rob Bowman, the director, seems so enamored with the magic that he forgets that you can't just put special effects in a movie and will automatically enjoy it. You know, there, there has to actually be some kind of tension or, you know, it, I guess it's going for just spectacle, but it's not that spectacular and it really isn't... I, I find the visuals of Daredevil fairly engaging, you know, I, but this, I can't think of a single frame of it which is actually, you know, like, stand out where you look at something and you're like, wow, that looked really good, that is something, you know, I'm going to tell my buddies about this, and, well, you probably wouldn't say it quite like that, because, yeah, that sounds a little too upper class for, for, for the word buddies, but anyway. Yeah, there's, there's just nothing. So, again, movie with ninjas, you'd expect it to be not boring, and, and you'd be wrong, I'm afraid. This magic stuff, ba basically we have, the, these guys are sent after Electra. Well, guys and one girl. And they have, like, one specific power each. We have Stone, who has thick skin and is strong, I, I think. Some, something like that. We have, we have an actual sort of ninja guy, and he wields two katanas, so that should be cool, and if they actually had him use them more than, again, just a few minutes, then it actually would be cool. In fact, the, the martial arts, when it actually breaks out into martial arts, it's really not bad. It's fairly well choreographed. They overuse slow-mo a bit, but it actually starts being good, and then it ends almost as, you know, quickly as it started, it just within a minute or two. So you never have a chance to get into it. And the film was hardly ever tense. Anyway, Stone and this guy whose name I really don't remember, Dual Katana guy, this guy named Tattoo, who has these tattoos, and they come to life. Basically, he has tattoos of animals, and thus he, you know, he, he beast masters the crap out of his enemies with these animal tattoos. And then we have Typhoid, the, the chick, who kills by touch or kiss or something like that. 
She enjoys long walks through the woods, killing plant life around her for no particular reason. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, these four, I mean at least two of them, really don't sound like they'd make for good fight scenes, and you wouldn't be wrong. The This actually comes close to Ghost Rider, the first one, in that they're not really being action. There is actual action in this movie. It's not quite as bad. You know, Ghost Rider has no action. No actual action in it. Just you know, special effects showdowns. But the th what something they do both, you know, a, a common trait between them. You know, actually maybe Mark Stephen Johnson watched this movie and said, oh wow, that's what I should have done with Daredevil. Let me do it in the next superhero movie I do. Anyway, something they do share is that these really seemingly cool, I mean, at least th these are some fairly cool concepts for, you know, bad guys, but they're dispatched so easily with little to no actual conflict or fight, and that, I, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to make the hero look really cool and capable, but what it does is make the villains look really useless. And it makes you wonder why, you know, stronger ones weren't sent. One of the ninjas uses a fully automatic weapon. Now, I implore you, any, any potential directors who might be listening to this, if you want to make a movie where some, where, where, you know, fully automatic weapons are used by the antagonists, and you want to make a movie that has ninjas as the antagonists, both of those are fine ideas, but not together. Do not combine the two. To just, no, it, it just, if, if you're gonna do ninjas, ninjas sneak and, you know, avoid detection, and, and don't use fully automatic modern weaponry like that. This movie is actually only roughly 90 minutes, if you don't count the credits, and in spite of that, it is a true trial to sit through. I believe this was only my, I can't have been my second viewing, it must have been my third viewing. And I was just bored out of my skull throughout. It just never grabbed me. And I realized that I, I basically already knew what was going to happen, but still, there are movies I've watched far more times where I was still, you know, getting into it. It's not even like enjoyably bad, like, you know, Street Fighter or something. It's just bad. The effects aren't even all that good for, you know, uh, for, for how much of this is actually just an effects showcase. They just, they weren't that impressive back then. I think this was from like 2005 or something. You know, excuse me, there are, there are movies with better effects that are older than this. And, yeah, it, and it's obviously a very superficial motive. It, it just, you can't just rest your movie on special effects. In fact, there aren't even, I, I suppose it's not even quite that it does that, because there aren't that many special effects. There aren't that many uses of, you know, I have no idea what this movie is supposed to be sort of doing to, you know, be a worthwhile viewing experience. It doesn't have enough actual action. There aren't enough special effects to make up for the lack of action. The characters are bland and... Yeah, it just... It's, it's a nothing of a movie, really. And I suppose that pretty well covers everything. The trailers kind of uh, spoil a bit of the fairly minimal plot in this, and just in general, 
I'll see. Re really, there's there's not much to. That there aren't particularly plot twists in the movie. You know, there's just this this sort of one reveal, which is supposed to be really meaningful, but again, it's given away in the trailers. And other than that, it just isn't, you know, the overall, I suppose the plot makes a decent amount of sense, and I don't know, it's it's not terribly convoluted, I guess, for you know, being a fairly new Hollywood movie, but it's just not very interesting. And... Yeah, like I said, it, it just completely goes through the motions of this, you know, archetype of the assassin who no longer wants to be an assassin. You know, adding nothing to that and not being a very good entry into that uh, subgenre. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.